All this change is not going away. It's not. I hate to tell you. Don't shoot the messenger, right? It's not. It's only going to accelerate. So that being said, that being said, number one, what we resist persists. What we resist persists. So the more you resist that kind of notion, the harder it's going to be on you personally because you're going to be more frustrated with it. You're not going to get in sync with it. You're going to be more challenged with it, and that doesn't typically put you in a resourceful place. Okay? So what you resist persists. So what it means is how do we navigate our lives through sort of the chaos? So here's the, the analogy I like to use. So if you're uh, in this boat and you're in the ocean and you're moving around, you want to know how to navigate through the waves in a certain way so that you glide through that relatively easily versus be thrown out there and knocked around with every wave that hits you and then you don't even know where you're going. You're knocked over here and then you're knocked over there and then you're over here. So the rest of today is about how do I navigate through that. In sourcing company employees reaching out to help out other companies, this is a little bit of a twist from what we've seen in the past where you have strategic partners. You know, so you have an American Express that's going to team up with a Delta Airlines because it makes sense to do so. Okay, yes, but what this is saying is actually leaders from one company to go in and help the leaders of another company help manage their business. So more of that is, is starting to surface. I'm seeing it from, I do a lot of executive coaching. I'm starting to see a little bit more of that. And I actually think that's a pretty cool thing when you think about it. So it's like a true partnership, like, listen, we're in this together. If you fail, I fail. So how do we help each other? And maybe we have some talent on our team. You don't. Maybe we can cross-pollinate a bit. So that's an interesting concept that I think we might see a little bit more of. This is critically important. The enemy of high performance is not stress. It impacts no question. The problem is we don't have anything to build in equal amounts of renewal. That's the missing piece, is we don't have the piece to build in renewal. You're going to have the crisis is out there. You're going to have stress out there. And here's the deal. An event is just an event. The meaning you put on that event is what creates the drama. Really. Okay? An event is just an event, but what you put on, when you say that event means, is what creates your stress, it creates your drama, your unhappiness, and everything else. Okay? So I'm actually going to give you some tools to help shift that today. So, the, so that it's really not having a disciplined approach for recovery that's lacking for us. We're going to have the stress out there, but how do we renew? How do we build in the renewal system? The global citizens to global consciousness, what does that mean? That goes back to we're beginning to understand we're all in this together. The recession really proved that. Um, so what happens in, G in Egypt affects us. What happens in Europe affects us and vice versa. Um, climate change and other issues are demanding more global solutions, as we know. The use of analytics and customization and smart everything is just going to be our way of life. It's just going to be our way of life. Um, mobility. In fact, one of the chapters in Kensho is called Towers in the Sky. And what I really produce in the argument of, of that chapter is when you really think about it, it's sort of silly. Now, not, this won't apply to every job, and I know that, especially in this industry. But when you really think about it, you leave your home, you get in a car, you drive whatever how far that is, you're dealing with the stress of traffic and everything else, you're polluting the earth at the same time, you go to a building, you go up the bank of elevators and you sit in front of a computer, of which you could have done at home. <laughs> right, I mean really, think about that, right? So some jobs, and I, yeah, server still has to be in front of a guest, I get it. But what I'm asking people to do is to challenge the thinking of what have you just considered to be the way it is, and are you starting to think about, well, what if? What if we did that differently? What would that mean? So some organizations are saving millions of dollars in real estate costs because they're not building the buildings anymore because those workers are now telecommuter workers and they're happier because there's more work-life balance. You know, all those things go into that.